Hey guys, welcome back to another DJI Avata 2 video. And this week we're going to be looking at Rocksteady versus Gyroflow. By the way, if I sound nasally, it's because I have been feeling under the weather. So this video is going to be a struggle for me, but we carry on because I'm dedicated to doing YouTube and I wanted to make sure that this video is on time for you guys. <coughs> <coughs> Now I'm curious about this one because everyone talks about it. So I wanted to test this for myself to see if Gyroflow is noticeably better than Rocksteady. Wow, this video is really hard. I have been struggling. Like I'm, mentally, I'm not there. I'm absolutely <laughs> Not only am I gonna show you some side-by-side -side comparisons between Rocksteady and Gyroflow, but some noticeable, notable, noticeable, really not well am I, some noticeable points to consider before choosing either one of the stabilization methods. If you're new, hello, my name is Demetrius and I create videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And it's a mixture of entertaining and educational content. Oh my God, how am I struggling? <laughs> if you want to learn more about the DJI Vada 2, subscribe to stay up to date. Now, let's take a look at some clips first. to go and test Rocksteady versus Gyroflow. I went to Huntsville for the weekend and I met up with my friend Abe who was riding a motorbike and we could test this. However, unfortunately in my last video you would have seen, I had a lot of bite marks on me and that's because I got eaten alive by these flies, these black flies and mosquitoes I got absolutely destroyed. So it made it very challenging to record and film this video. M my legs were literally bleeding so it made it very hard to film and I couldn't really finish this so I had to go and shoot again to get some variation for the shots. That being said, the motorcycle footage did look better. However, when we were flying, it was very uncomfortable and all of a sudden when we stopped because there was a short shower, so we had to wait in the car for a bit until the shower stopped, then we continued, but again, just absolutely destroyed by the fly. So we called it a day. It was very difficult, but it made for some great footage and a story to tell. Now both of these clips were recorded with wide 4K60 as Gyroflow only works in the wide field of view and this is something that I mentioned in my previous video. So did you guess right? Did you guess which one was Rocksteady and which is Gyroflow? So the first clip was actually Gyroflow and then the second clip was actually Rocksteady. And then the side by side comparison on the left was Rocksteady and on the right was Gyroflow. So let's jump into how to use Gyroflow. Now the great thing here, Gyroflow is free and this is like absolutely fantastic. Who doesn't like free software? All you have to do is just download the program whether you're using Windows or Mac. Once you've installed it, all you need to do is just drag and drop the clip that you want to stabilize. If you drag in a clip that hasn't recorded the stabilization data, for instance, if you recorded it in ultra wide or normal, it will give you a message at the top saying that no gyro, flow, no gyro data has been detected. So when you are recording in wide and you turn off Rocksteady, a message actually does pop up in the DJI Google 3 telling you that gyro data is being recorded. Once you've imported the clip into Gyroflow, the only thing I changed here was the aspect ratio. So by default it is 16 by nine, but I wanted to go four by three. Obviously this would be cropped in slightly in order to smooth out the footage or stabilize the footage and that's it. 
that's all it was it was really easy obviously there's a lot more features and in depth but this is not that video where we're covering gyroflow the program i recommend that you check out other youtube videos if you want to know more how to use gyroflow however for doing one or two buttons it came out really well also using the same clip i also wanted to try out CapCut, light cut and insta 360 studio to see if it could stabilize the footage and let's just say CapCut was the only one that had the option to stabilize, but it wasn't that great. Lightcut didn't have an option and nor did Insta360. So you're going to have to stabilize the footage first before putting it into those programs. But then again, you'd probably just skip that and go straight to the editing software of your choice. I wish Lightcut had stabilization because that would be great to have in terms of just doing everything in one app. And if you haven't seen my video on light cut, you can check that video up here. And my battery is going to die, so I have to change my battery. Now let's move on to things to note with either using Rocksteady or Gyroflow. And the first one here, and I mentioned this earlier in the video and in my previous video, is that you can only use the wild, wild, wide field of view in order to use Gyroflow because that's the one that records the gyro data within the drone. And this message does pop up when you turn off stabilization. So if you wanted a wider field of view and wanted to use ultra wide, you have to use Rocksteady. The other thing to note here is that if you are going to use Gyroflow, it is going to add to your workflow. That means that the footage is not going to be stabilized and you have to spend extra time to stabilize that footage and then put it into your timeline. So that is something to consider, especially someone myself who records YouTube videos. Do I want to add more time to my workflow? Whereas Rocksteady, which has been seen in most of my YouTube videos so far when I bought the Avata 2, it's been fine. I have not had any complaints. The other great thing here is if you are using Rocksteady, it's quicker to share onto social media and using apps such as Lightcut to share your footage. Whereas if you didn't record using Rocksteady and you turned that off, you'd have to stabilize your footage in Gyroflow and then import it to your phone and then using an app of your choice to create a social media reel. Now, what do I prefer? Having played back the footage, I don't see anything noticeable that Gyroflow is 100 times better than Rocksteady. I do feel Gyroflow is slightly better and going forward, will I be using it? Again, if I'm making these YouTube videos for simplicity, I would probably use Rocksteady. However, maybe if I wanted the smoothest footage possible and I'm doing this for paid work, then possibly I would switch to wide, have less distortion on the side and smoother footage. This is just the pros and cons of using both. Again, if you wanted that wider field of view, you'd stick to ultra wide and using Rocksteady. I mean, that's everything that I can think of. I can't imagine this being such a long video because we're only covering a very specific topic. However, if you use Rocksteady or Gyroflow, let me know in the comments section down below which you prefer and why. If there's anything you want to learn about the DJI Vata 2, let me know in the comments section down below. Are you looking to get into FPV and is the DJI Vata 2 on your shortlist? Subscribe for more videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And YouTube recommends you check out this video next. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.